Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. So, AI, huh? LLMs have really caught your attention, haven't they? You want the inside scoop on how these things actually work, especially with something as, well, logical as math. And you've brought a pretty compelling research paper to the table, GSM Symbolic, understanding the limitations of mathematical reasoning in large language models, straight from the minds of some researchers at Apple, no less. This is gonna be good. But first, LLMs, large language models, just in case anyone's new here, think of them like those really smart chat bots everyone's using, but with bigger dreams than just chatting. Like, they want to write code, compose music, even solve those brain-bending equations. And there's this whole buzz that LLMs are this close to a huge breakthrough, thinking logically, just like us humans. Imagine AI that doesn't just crunch numbers, but actually gets the reasoning behind them. That's what everyone's hoping for, yeah. And this research digs right into that. They use something called GSM 8K, stands for Grade School Math 8K, which is basically a data set of, you guessed it, thousands of grade school math problems. But here's the thing. It's not about LLMs getting the right answer. It's about how they get there. Can they solve these problems using the same logical steps a human would? So it's like showing your work, not just the final answer. Exactly. But there's a catch. Using a static data set like GSMAK, it's got limitations. There's always the risk of what we call data contamination. Data contamination. That doesn't sound good. It's like imagine an LLM aced a math test because it had already seen those exact questions maybe during its training. Not exactly a fair test of its reasoning skills. Definitely but not. So how do you get around that? You can't exactly give the AI a pop quiz every time. And that's where things get really clever. They created something called GSM Symbolic, and it's elegant in its simplicity, really. Imagine, like, Mad Libs, but for math problems. Now you're speaking my language? Yeah. Love that analogy. Mad Libs for math problems? How does that even work? So they made these templates, right. And it lets them generate tons of variations of the same problem. They can swap out names, change the numbers, make it more or less complex, but the underlying logic stays the same. So instead of Sarah has five apples, yeah, it's like David has 12 oranges, or the bakery has 37 croissants. Exactly. And that's the beauty of it. This Mad Libs approach lets researchers tweak parts of the problem and see how the LLM reacts. This is already blowing my mind. We're just getting started. So with all these variations, what they learn about how LLMs actually tackle these problems, what surprised them? Well, one of the first things they found, LLMs, they're fickle, way more than you write things. Fickle? Like their performance changes with the wind? Kind of, yeah. They found these LLMs can have wildly different success rates on basically the same math problem, even when the underlying logic is the same. Remember those Mad Libs variations? The apples, oranges, and croissants, yeah. Uh, right. Even tiny changes, like swapping five apples to seven apples, could totally throw an LLM off, even if it doesn't actually change how you'd solve the problem. Like, imagine being great at one math problem, then struggling with another one that's using the same logic, just different numbers, that's what they found. That is wild. You'd think a 5 for a 7 wouldn't matter if the logic's the same. So what's going on there? Are they just not really getting the math? That's the million-dollar question. It suggests that LLMs might not be truly grasping the abstract concept of, you know, addition-subtraction, not in the way that we do. So it's more about recognizing a familiar pattern instead of truly understanding the rules. Intriguing and kind of creepy at the same time. What else do they find? Okay, get ready for this. Turns out, LLMs are more thrown off by changes in the numbers than by changes in the names of a problem. Like swapping Sarah for David had less of an impact than changing those five apples to seven apples, even when it didn't change the answer. Wait, hold on. The AI is less confused by changing the person in the problem than by changing the amount. That seems completely backwards. It does, right. And it challenges what we think we know about how these LLMs process information. One theory is that because numbers appear less often in their training data than, like, common names, LLMs might be overfitting to those specific values. Instead of learning the relationships between numbers, they're treating them almost like proper nouns. It's like the AI thinks five is just, like, part of what an apple is, not just how many there are wild. Yeah, it really shows you the difference between how elements think and how we do it. You can't help but be amazed by how easily our brains handle this stuff. Seriously. So any other big surprises in this research? Well, as you might guess, when the math problems get trickier and need more steps to solve them, the LLM starts struggling. 
big time. Hit a wall when things get too tough. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of backs up that idea that they're relying more on pattern recognition than actual understanding. It's like, as the logic chain gets longer, the number of possible patterns just explodes. Like yeah. trying to memorize every single chess move, impossible, right? Yeah, makes sense. More complex problem, more ways for the LLM to trip up, especially if it's all about spotting those patterns instead of actually problem solving. Right. And this last finding, this might be the most telling one, they made a twist on their data set, called it GSM Noop. Basically, they snuck in some totally irrelevant info into the problems. Irrelevant info? Like what, did they give the apples life stories or something? Not quite. Imagine a problem. It says, Sarah's got five apples, two of them are green. How many apples does Sarah have total? Okay, so that green apple bit's just there to throw the AI off. A human would know to ignore that. You'd think so, right? But LLMs, they often fell for it. Instead of focusing on the actual math, they got distracted by these extra details, tried to use them in the calculation even when it made zero sense. No way. Even though a human would be like, dude, the color's not important here. Exactly. And it just highlights how differently these LLMs approach problem solving. It's like they're so busy looking for patterns, they latch onto anything, relevant or not, and trying to make it fit. So if LLMs aren't really reasoning, does that mean they're doomed to fail at anything beyond the super basic stuff? Not at all. I mean, LLMs are still insanely powerful, have tons of uses. They're already writing different creative things, poems, code, scripts, even music, you name it. They can give you pretty good answers to your questions too, even if they're not always what you expect. But like this research shows, if we're aiming for that real human-like reasoning in AI, we gotta explore some new paths. So where do we go from here? What's this mean for the future of AI? So we've uncovered some pretty big limitations in how LLMs do math, even at a grade school level. Does that mean the dream of truly thinking AI is dead? I wouldn't say that. This research, it doesn't mean LLMs aren't powerful. They are. I mean, look at what they can already do. Yeah. But it does show us there's a difference. LLMs, they're great at pattern recognition, right? Mimicking what they've been trained on. But real reasoning, the way we do it, might need a whole different approach. It's like we've been trying to teach AI math by showing them the answers to a million problems instead of the actual rules, the why behind it. Exactly. And this research, it's a push to find new ways to develop AI, ways that go beyond just, here's a ton of data, figure it out. If we want AI that truly gets abstract concepts, uses logic in new situations, maybe even reasons ethically, well, that needs us to really understand intelligence itself at a much deeper level. Makes you appreciate how complex our own minds are. Right. If something as simple as grade school math is this hard for LLMs, it really says something about the human brain. Absolutely. This isn't just about what AI can't do. It's about what we can do. We take our ability to reason for granted, and here we are, struggling to get machines to do a tiny bit of that. It makes you really stop and think about how incredible our brains are. It really does. And we learned this stuff back in grade school. Didn't need terabytes of data for that. <laughs> well, on that note, huge thank you to you, the listener, for joining us on this deep dive. Turns out those grade school problems are a little tougher for AI than we thought. And to our expert, thanks for breaking this all down for us. Definitely gives us a lot to think about as AI keeps evolving. And everyone listening, if you want to see the research for yourself, check out the show notes for the link. Until next time, keep those brains buzzing because the future of AI, it's a conversation we're all part of.